Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking to you about cheap cycling shoes. So this was my first ever pair of proper clip-in cycling shoes. These are SPD ones, the two bolt versions, normally called like mountain bike shoes. So these cost me a grand total of £25 and today I'm going to let you know what I think of them and how well they've lasted. So first up, I'm going to tell you how many miles I got out of these. I don't know at what point you're supposed to replace cycling shoes, so I just kept using them. Maybe they're well past their use by date, but I'm not really sure. So I've got eight 8,000 kilometers of use out of these, both indoors and outdoors, and that's in all types of conditions. I will take these through mud, through rain. I use them on my mountain bike, I use them on my road bike. These get used absolutely all the time. Given how much use they've got, you can definitely tell they've been put through the ringer. There is denting and scuffs and rips all over them. But given their price, I'm not really that fussed. For £25, as long as these shoes survive, I'm pretty happy. So given the price of these, I didn't really put that much effort into looking after them or maintaining them well. To be honest, if I want to wash these shoes, I'll take them for a ride in the rain. That's how little love they've got. But despite all that horrible treatment, they've really lasted quite well. So there's a reason I'm finally deciding to upgrade them. And that's because the sole has started to come apart from the bottom. All the other imperfections are just like visual, but this one is actually kind of important. The actual structure of the shoe is starting to fail. But yeah, 8,000 kilometers, I have no real complaints. So let's go through all the other things on them. So first up, obviously it's the color is just brown pretty much now. It's been stained by so much oil and mud and it's just impossible to get it to be white again. Also, you can see along the edge, there's loads of cracks. All these little ventilation holes are just falling apart. So the bottom of these shoes have held up really well. So on the sole, you have these bits which stick out, the plastic bits for grip. These have like no rubber on them. They're really hard. So it's not that great for grip, but in terms of strength and durability, it's done really well. There's not that much wear on here. Considering I have some really bad habits, like I will run my foot along the ground when I'm slowing down just for the fun of it. So yeah, this is really well built. It's very hard. It's done a good job there. The cleat, yeah, that's doing fine as well. No problems there whatsoever. Obviously that's a replaceable part, so it doesn't really matter either. So the boa dials are still doing excellently. The only problem I have is they're a bit stiff to pull out sometimes. You can push them in and tighten up perfectly fine, but then to pull them out, you've got to give it a really, a lot of force to get them to come up. So that's my only issue with them really. Maybe I could put some WD-40 in there and it will loosen things up. So let's talk about stiffness. I know lots of people love a really stiff shoe for cycling. Um, I've never had a really stiff shoe, so I can't really compare it to that. But just for example here, you can bend it quite a lot in the heel, as you can see. But this bit at the front, that's pretty, the front bit is pretty firm, but I can still bend it a little bit. So yeah, you can see it's not the most stiff shoe but it's quite nice for walking in, which I mean, it's a cycling shoe, so it shouldn't be that important for walking, but it's, I've never felt that I wanted a stiffer shoe, to be honest, but that's probably because I've never tried a stiffer shoe, so yeah. So when I get my new pair of shoes, I'll definitely be comparing them to these ones to see if there's an actual difference in terms of feel and power. Okay, how about the comfort? I've worn these for like five, six hour rides, and when I come home and take my shoes off, I'm never thinking, wow, my feet are in so much pain during that ride. Um, they fit quite well. They're just, um, these are size 47s and they're pretty wide. I've quite wide feet. Um, I do feel like it could have been a tad wider in the toe box here, but I think over time, my feet have just sort of forced the fabric to become wider itself. So these really have sort of molded themselves to my feet. It's got an insole in here. And to be honest, there's barely any wear on this whatsoever. I'm really impressed at how well it's done. It's actually really good considering. So I ride these in all conditions. In the hot weather, I've never felt that my feet were overheating. I guess that's because there's so many ventilation holes in it. So good job there. Um, in the rain, there is one criticism I have is that these, if these get wet, they will stay wet for hours. And yeah, there is no good way to dry these. It takes like a full day out in the sun to dry them properly. So it's not ideal in that sense. The fabric is really soft. So that's probably why it just absorbs all the water. So yeah, these are not good to ride in the rain. So when it's cold, my feet did get freezing in these probably because there's so many holes, like I said, but I think that's the case with any cycling shoe. So I just got a pair of fabric overshoes to protect my feet from the cold and that did the job really. So overall, considering the price, these shoes have done a hell of a job. How long do you guys get out of your road cycling shoes? It'd be quite interesting to let us know down in the comments, probably some good information there, but I think 
8,000 kilometers out of a cheap pair of cycling shoes is an excellent job. So here's the thing I really want to talk about. These shoes, which cost 25 pounds, have done so well, I'm finding it difficult to justify buying a more expensive pair of shoes, to be honest. I could just buy this pair of shoes again and I think I would be happy. But, you know, having a YouTube channel means I need to experiment with new things. So I'm gonna get a more expensive pair of shoes and compare it to this one and see if it's actually worth the money because I think that'll be quite interesting. So there's a few pairs of shoes I've been looking at. The main one I've seen is the Specialized Recon 3. That goes for about 200 pounds. So I want to see if paying 10 times the price gives you a much better shoe. So the reason I've chosen that one is because it's the only big brand of shoes I can find that actually goes up to my size here in China. It's a bit annoying. I would have liked to try a Lake shoes I've heard a lot about. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with probably. So stick around for a few more videos and I'll definitely be doing an unboxing of those and a quick comparison. And then hopefully in a year, I'll come back to those expensive shoes and see if they've lasted as well as these cheap ones have. So the thing is these cheap shoes lasted me 18 months and I put them through hell, but the expensive shoes should last at least like five times longer than that. And as they're so expensive, I'm gonna have to look after them properly. I can't just like, throw them around like I do with these shoes. I'm actually gonna have to take care of them. Hopefully they'll last a lot longer than this. If not, we'll see. All right, well, that's it from me. You know the drill. If you like the video, hit thumbs up button, like and subscribe, share with your friends and be sure to have a good ride. Yeah, okay, that's, that's my outro now. All right, see you in the next one.